Hey leaders, welcome back to another episode here on Next Steps Coaching. Today we're talking burnout and the three things you can do to fight against it. Now, let me actually start by setting the stage with uh, one of my Christmas experiences as a child. And and we were going around uh, the circle as a family, and uh, at least our tradition was that uh, we would write letters to everybody on Christmas morning. And after we finished reading you know, our letters, I, I would write one to, to my brother and to my mom and to my dad. And after we were done doing that, they, they got to open their presents. Uh, and it just so happens that uh, this particular Christmas, I, I went last, right? We kind of rotated through. Uh, and I remember watching um, my dad uh, open his presents. And I don't remember all of what he got, but there was one in there. And uh, it was a Nebraska Cornhuskers jacket. And if you know anything about me and my family, we are huge Cornhusker fans. Then we went to my mom, and she opened her presents, and she got a Cornhusker jacket. Then we went to my brother, and we read his letters, and he opened all of his whatever presents, and he got a Cornhusker jacket. Uh, you know, and like, after my dad, I was like, dang, why did he get one? I really wanted one. And I, I was young and, and not a very bright kid. And then my mom got one, and I was like, that's funny. They both got jackets. And then my brother got one, and I thought, if I don't get a jacket, I'm going to be so ticked and disappointed, and I'm going to have to figure out how to hide that disappointment. <laughs> uh, and they read me my letters, and I open up all of my presents, and there is not a Cornhusker jacket to be seen anywhere. And as I'm trying to, like, process this, I was I, I, a 6th, 7th, 8th grade, somewhere there, I want to say middle school, like maybe, maybe a freshman in high school, and I just, like... I remember feeling this enormous sense of disappointment that they got like the one thing I wanted and I didn't get it. And as we were cleaning up uh, yeah, and I'm processing all this and throwing away all of the garbage, my parents go, oh, hey, look, we found one more present that got hidden behind the couch accidentally. Justin has your name on it. And uh, okay. And I walk over there and I open it up and it's a Nebraska Cornhusker jacket. And those 10 minutes of just like despondent disappointment and nothing mattered and it was the worst Christmas ever instantly turned around into the best Christ, uh, best Christmas ever. And quite honestly, like I wore that jacket everywhere at all times for everything until it was just rags. But it's this idea that burnout ultimately happens in those disappointment moments. We want to talk about that. And there's actually this uh, interesting story uh, between uh, 1 Kings 17 and 1 Kings 19 in uh, the Bible. We get this story of Elijah, a prophet of God, who is dealing with this mounting leadership pressure to bring God's people back to him as the story gets told. And it kind of culminates in in uh, some rather spectacular ways in 1 Kings chapter 19 that we won't go into all of the details, but it's an absolutely fascinating uh, case study just into into leadership, into culture, into dynamics, into uh, biblical studies. Uh, but in this moment, we see at the very end of the story, even after Elijah has become victorious, this despondent, depressive, almost a, a perfect example, case study, textbook example of burnout. Why? Well, because here are really the two major areas where we see burnout happen. The first is in the let down between crises, right? If we are constantly a leader that runs from crisis to crisis to crisis to crisis, it is in between those moments of chaos that we find that gap for burnout because we learn to thrive in the midst of chaos and don't know how to nourish ourselves to sustain that bridge between them. That even if you're a great leader at handling chaos and change and discomfort, if you don't know how to handle that in between space, you're just constantly going to seek it out and constantly become disappointed and stressed and agitated and ultimately to burnout. The second area that burnout happens is right after mission accomplished. And that is what we see in Elijah. That it is right after this grand culmination where we actually should be celebrating, he just becomes so despondent because now that mission is accomplished... He feels hopeless. Why? Well, because here are uh, some quick tips, some, uh, the four emotions that become present when we talk about burnout, or at least maybe the four most common. Uh, the first is egotism, this idea of, I did it, I'm so great, I'm grand, everybody should look and celebrate me, that when we puff ourselves up and we kind of realize, like, nobody else thinks that way, we fall into burnout. Second is resentment. Instead of, look at how great I am, I did this, it's, I'm the only one that could have done this, and you all should thank me. 
And again, when we find that people don't thank us or think the same way that we do, we fall towards that burnout. The, the third is, is bitterness. Look at all that I've done for you, and you're not even grateful. And that resentment just kind of, that anger, that bitterness builds in us. And that is actually the fourth one is, is anger. Egotism, resentment, bitterness, anger, the four most common emotions that lead to burnout. That if you can't shake those, if those are perpetually creeping up in your life, that is a huge warning sign and trigger that burnout is close by. Now, as I promised, I want to leave you with the three steps, right? We had one story, uh, the two causes, the four emotions. We'll circle back around and now do the three things we can do to fight burnout. The first actually is humility. And, and maybe that goes without saying, but that's the one we lose the quickest, right? If we remain humble and realize that we've been given this mantle of leadership, that we've been called and equipped and, and gifted, but ultimately that is to serve and better others, we can help fight against that burnout. The, the second thing that we can do is to actually practice vulnerability, right? And that, that's a scary thing. And we will, our heads will get filled with all sorts of lies about why we can't open up and why we can't be vulnerable and why we can't practice all of these things. Like, well, if they know that I'm struggling or if they know that I'm hurting or if I have to admit that they offended me, they're going to think less of me. And so we continue to harbor those feelings but don't really give them an outlet. And that's where that resentment and that bitterness and that anger ultimately is allowed to creep in. Stop it by proclaiming it. I need to express forgiveness. I need to ask for forgiveness. I need to see if we can reconcile this relationship. I need to practice some vulnerability. I'm really hurt. Can we work on us? And the third, that us is community. Burnout happens when we do it alone. That was ultimately Elijah's downfall. He thought that he was in this alone. He feared that it was just him. And he harbored those feelings. Fight against that today. Stay humble. Practice vulnerability. Seek community. Avoid burnout. Your task as a leader is too great to succumb to burnout. It destroys lives. It destroys relationships. It destroys callings. Don't let it destroy you. I'm just with Next Steps Coaching. If you need any help with that, I would love to help. Be sure to find all of my contact information down below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Uh, if this has helped you in any way, I would love to be in touch. Anyway, we'll see you guys next time.